Hi, welcome back to Nagarjuna. And we were just starting chapter 18, and we said of the 27 chapters of this ancient extended poem, uh, the 18th chapter is probably the second most quoted chapter. And it's the chapter where Nagarjuna really gets into emptiness. And the way he gets into emptiness is by examining uh, contradictions about the person and the body and mind of the person. So Michael and Michael's body and mind. And there's a lot of contradictions uh, that are going on about the way we think about ourselves. And we learn to live with them. And we learn to ignore them. And we learn to sort of, uh, what do you call that? Candy coat them or something like that? Sugar. Sugar coat them, yeah. And we get used to those contradictions and we don't, we don't struggle with it much. And kind of Nagarjuna takes it as his mission uh, to, to grab us and by the collar and say, look, this doesn't make sense. You know, if, if things exist the way you guys think, then this cannot be. Something's wrong, you know. And he, so he's asking questions that you asked your mom when you were about seven years old. And she told you that's just the way it is, you know. And then you tell your children that, your own children, and then you, that's the way it's been. So uh, we're going to start. It's a very difficult chapter. And there have been whole books written about this chapter. One book, uh, which we recommended yesterday, is a, a recently translated book by our Mixed Nuts team. Uh, I'll give you the ordering information here. It's called Emptiness Meditations. Uh, the author is actually the same commentator that we are using for this book today, uh, which is Chone Lama Dorpa Shidu, born 1675, uh, passed away in 1748. He has, by coincidence, he has a, a great connection uh, to, to, to our monastery, to my monastery, uh, which has, it's one of the big three monasteries in Tibet, uh, with a traditional enrollment of about 15,000 monks. Uh, now there's still 3,000. We built it back up to 3,000 monks after it was destroyed. And uh, about 90% of the monks were killed or, or disrobed. And uh, so we have, uh, we have this book, Emptiness Meditations. Uh, it's been translated by our Mixed Nuts team. Uh, and this book was uh, done by Venerable Utpala. And as I mentioned uh, in the last classes, uh, we're looking forward to commentaries, modern explanations of this book. It's a very difficult book uh, with about uh, 38 uh, proofs of emptiness in it and uh, an extra couple of hundred pages on the traditional instructions for how to meditate. Uh, so these are the, the original texts from about 1,300 years ago on how to do your daily meditation, how to set up your seat, what kind of food to eat, what kind of place to have, uh, how to start focusing your mind, nine levels of how you focus your mind. And all of those instructions are in this book. Uh, I've, I've, I mentioned that John Brady and Connie O'Brien are going to be writing uh, commentaries, on, especially on the part about how to meditate because they both spent, uh, they've both done very powerful three-year retreats. Uh, and uh, Venerable Utpala, who was the, the translator of this book, is also uh, has agreed uh, to do some commentaries on it. So I think it's going to take four or five uh, books of explanation. But I encourage you to get this book. I like the ebook. Uh, my neighbors are always asking me what the heck I do. And uh, it's kind of hard to explain. And when the ebook came out, I, I bought a bunch of copies and just sent it around the neighborhood. And uh, so it's so easy to get it. It takes about 30 seconds to QR code and get it. And, and it's extremely valuable. So I, I encourage you to get it. It's by the same author that we're studying now. Uh, Choni Lama, and it will help you understand this book better, okay? All right, so let's get going into chapter 18. We had covered 
we talked about uh, the very first verse, and verses in Sanskrit are normally, which are called shloka, uh, will be two lines of Sanskrit, and the Tibetans will translate it as four lines. And this first verse is split into two parts, okay? Uh, the, first, the first part says, Kelte Pumbo Dayina, which means uh, if you, if your body and mind, if Tim's body and mind were really Tim, then Tim would go in and out of existence the way his mind and body too. And that requires an appreciation of the Buddhist idea that almost all the things in the world, those things which are changing, those things which came into existence because of some kind of causes, that the nature of being caused is that you blink in and out of existence by the millisecond. Uh, nothing, nothing is solid. Uh, things are, are blinking in and out of existence from the time they start to the time they end. And if, so body is one of those things, physical matter. The nature of physical matter is that it blinks in and out of existence moment by moment, millisecond by millisecond. And the nature of the mind is also the same. Uh, it blinks in and out uh, moment to moment. It, it goes in a flow, but the flow is made up of milliseconds of consciousness which are blinking in and out, okay? And so the argument here by Nagarjuna is that what, what's your relationship to your body and mind, okay? And did you notice there are some discrepancies? And he loves discrepancies. And he says, look, there's a discrepancy here. And we're like, what's discrepancy? I'm fine. I'm my body and mind. He says, no, it's not fine. You know, if, if you are, are you your body and mind or do you have an existence independent of your body and mind? Okay. For example, if your body and mind disappeared, would you still be here? Okay. So what's the relationship between you and your body and mind? And then Nagarjuna's way to resolve a discrepancy is to look at all the options. So the whole chapter is a list of options. And, and he, he doesn't comment on the options. He just says, he gives you an option and he lets you figure out that it's ridiculous. You know, and you say, well, not that one. And he says, whoa, it must be the next one, right? And then he gives you the next one and you're like, well, not that one either. And then he's like, well, you know, and, and then at the end of the chapter he says, so look, it's not what you thought, is it? because you just used up all your options, all right? So here's, we're starting the options, okay? You can see a picture here. Uh, and uh, it's just a stopwatch, and it means uh, if you are your body and mind, okay? If to be Tim is to be Tim's body and mind, then Tim must be changing millisecond to millisecond, okay? Uh, you can change your ideas, you can change your opinions, your feelings change constantly throughout the day. Your body, if you're my age, you understand it's uh, falling apart instant by instant over the length of your life. It's, it's, the, it's crumbling uh, as you get older. Uh, but, but we wouldn't say Tim as an idea. Tim uh, gets older. Or we wouldn't say Tim, uh, you know, vacillates, oscillates from moment to moment. We, we, we wouldn't say that. Your mind is constantly, you know, you're in a good mood, then somebody says some little stupid thing, and then you're in a bad mood the rest of the day. And the mind is very fickle, and the body is similarly fickle. Uh, but Tim is not fickle. Tim is Tim. Uh, Tim is the whole life, Tim. Okay? So he says, uh, I don't think uh, Tim could be it doesn't look to me, okay, I'm not telling you what to think. This is Nagarjuna's style. But if Tim were his body and mind, then I don't think, I don't think it could be because the body and mind are, are instant by instant changing like this. And then Tim is just Tim, you know, you don't pronounce his name different from moment to moment. Or Tim is Tim. Uh, he gets the name when he's a, a little baby. He carries the name... Uh, to his death and beyond. And then it's just Tim, it doesn't change. Like Tim's Tim, right? Tim's Tim. It doesn't become Tima or Taboo or 
It's just Tim. Okay. So, so Nagarjuna says, I don't like the first option, and I don't think you will either. I, I think you'll agree with me. And he doesn't give you the answers. He, he just points out the, the difficulties with different ideas. Now he's going to go a little bit further, and this is Chonin Lama. Okay. I'll just read the Tibetan and explain it. Dark Pumbo Chitsam Dharaji Chikyana. If if Tim was his body and mind taken in general, not as the moments of consciousness changing and the body constantly changing, but let's just say he's quote body and mind in general. Okay, Chendi Pumbo Dang Yang Chitugyula. Then he would be the parts that he has in this lifetime. Okay, so the the other guy said, I understand your reluctance to say that Tim is his body and mind, if you look at body and mind as things that are constantly in, in flux, because Tim's not in flux. Tim is a solid thing through his whole life. But what if we just look at the body and mind in general? What if we just say body and mind, and we don't worry about the atoms, and we don't worry about the thought waves, and, and we just say body and mind in general? How about that? Could we say Tim is that? Can we say that he has that relationship with his body and mind? And the guardian says, okay, let's, let's look at that. You know? <laughs> By the way, where is he going? Uh, I mean, the punchline, let's say the punchline. Uh, the punchline is uh, Tim didn't have to be this body and mind. The, the idea of Tim is artificially assigned to this particular body and mind by his karma, by the actions he's done in, in to how, how much kindness has he shown to other people will determine the strength of the connection between him and his body and mind. It's not a natural connection. It's an artificial connection. It's an idea. And that can have a bad side to it and it can have a good side to it. If Tim is an idea put on his body and mind according to how kind he is to other people, then if he understands that relationship, he can endeavor to be more kind and more compassionate to other people. He will collect more mental states uh, in his mind, which we, is what the definition of karma is. And then he will see himself in a, in a gradually more perfected way. And at the end of that process, process he could even become uh, immortal and serve uh, humanity on on all the planets of the of the of the universe. Okay, and that's the goal. So we take advantage of this artificial connection between his body and mind and Tim, and we improve on it because we recognize it's coming from us and it's not a natural connection. But to do that, we have to prove the connection is not natural, and and that it could be tinkered with to make him a. A, a being like an angel who could actually help countless people at the same time, because that's the goal of Buddhism, is to improve your being until you can serve countless people at the same time. And it is possible. And if you work on these books and you work with them and you learn the meditations, you can have confirmations in your meditation, in your prayers, in your meditation. You can get actual uh, undeniable experiences that that demonstrate to you without a book and without all this philosophy that it is possible to change your being. The human being is an un, unfinished person, is an unfinished being. But human beings as we know them are unfinished beings and their, their evolution, undeniable, un, unavoidable evolution is, is to become a person who can serve all beings in the universe at the same time. And that's, what we're, that's why we're doing, studying this book. But first you have to establish that we are not automatically the body and mind that we have now. If that connection is, uh, is changeable, or if that connection is artificial, then we can tinker with it and, and we can become an angel or whatever. Okay? And that's the whole goal of this book. Okay, so he says, uh, if we were the, okay, you want me to say Tim is just generally Tim's body and mind without talking about 
milliseconds. Okay. Same day, Pumadang, Yang Chi to Jirla, Deni Mirikte. In that case, he would be the parts that he consists of in this particular lifetime, meaning from the time he's born, or in Buddhism, from the time, from the instant that he is conceived until the time he takes his last breath. Then, is that what you're saying? That Tim is, without looking at the instantaneous question, is he just his body and mind in general from, from birth to, to death? Is that, is that what you want to say? Can we look? Are there any contradictions with saying that? Girla Deni Mirikte. Yes, there is a contradiction. <laughs> What's the contradiction? Sendi Pumbo Chimar Minjungatar. This body and mind don't continue after the point of death. This particular life's body and mind uh, don't continue after the point of death. The point of death uh, is a major transition in the composition of your body and mind. It's illogical to think that just because the body stops, the mind has to stop. I like to say if you see a car stopped on the side of the road when you're coming here on the highway, that's not, if the car is obviously broken or something happened to the car, it's not proof that the driver is dead. It's just the vehicle is, is stopped. It's not, it doesn't prove anything about the driver of the car. To see a body die uh, at the end of this life and, and, then the, and then to assume that the mind has died is illogical because the mind can't communicate with you anymore because the mouth died. Then this, you know, the lips don't work anymore and the teeth don't work anymore and you can't say anything anymore. It's like a driver in a car that's broken and they're banging on the windows, but they can't communicate. And if you ever have a, a deep meditation where you see a dead person or you communicate with a dead person, uh, that's exactly how it feels. They're very frustrated. Uh, they can't communicate and they're like banging on the windows and they, they didn't die. Okay? So there's no logical reason to assume that your mind stops when your body stops. We, we do assume it, but if you think about it, it's just like, you know, the person's cell phone ran out of battery, so they're dead. Oh, I haven't heard from Tim today. He must be dead. And then you're like, no, maybe his cell phone just ran out of battery. You're like, oh, yeah. You know, so, so that's what he's saying. Same thing, Pumbo, Chimar, Minjungwa, Dar. It's true that this, this life's body doesn't continue. Dak Yang Chima Mikewam. But can you say that proves that Tim doesn't continue? Okay. Yang na Dak Chima Kewe Dar Tse, Di Pumbo Ni Kyang Chima Ning Sam Jorwa Gyuwe Chir. Or are you saying that uh, Tim does continue past death and since he is his body and mind, that somehow his body didn't die? Are you saying like he took some version of his body to the next life and left this version of his body? Is that what you're saying? And then he's just pointing out contradictions again, meaning uh, he cannot be his body and mind because he would take the body with him. Okay, it's pretty simple. All right. Uh, all right. If he is, if Tim is only his body and mind, uh, and if the mind continues, then the body, the body should continue also, but the body tends to lay in the bed and you burn it or you bury it. Okay. All right. Mm, we had a picture for that, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Actually, it's coming from the... Let's use this one. Leave it up, though. Shenyang, uh, one more possibility, says Nagarjuna. And he's just... Uh, he's not telling you what he thinks. He's just eliminating possibilities, okay? And it's a beautiful... This is a very Buddhist approach, okay? Shenyang, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm just showing you problems with your ideas. Shenyang, Pumbo Kejik, Sosawala Dake, Jik Chenang, Mitete. Neither is it possible that Tim goes in and out of existence the way his body does or the way his mind does during the course of his life. Because your idea of an instant 
is that it is a discrete thing. One instant has a beginning and an end, and it stops, and then the next instant happens, right? So according to your idea, and this is very deep, okay? You don't understand that time is coming from you. So you assume that time is coming this way, which means time has measurements. Moments have a measurement, and that's fixed because it comes from the outside world, and it's not a, it's not a construct of your mind, okay? Time has some outside existence. So a moment, uh, those milliseconds of Tim, uh, they start and they stop. They have their own front end and they have their own back end. So actually a millisecond, which is the shortest period of time, is a contradiction in itself because it would have to have a front end and a back end or else it couldn't have a flow. The back end of the first moment has to touch the front end of the second moment to have a flow. If the back end of the first moment touches all the parts of the second moment, then there's no time. Time stops in one millisecond. So milliseconds must also have front ends and back ends for them to go on in a chain, okay? And, which is impossible if it's the shortest measurement of time. Okay, same with the atom, same problem with the atom. So that's one of Nagarjuna's favorite uh, contradictions. But what are we talking about here? Uh, so are you saying Tim is each millisecond of Tim's body and mind? Or are you saying he's separately, uh, a millisecond starts, a millisecond ends, pause, another millisecond starts, a millisecond ends, pause. Do, do, does millisecond one, uh, overlap with millisecond, millisecond two, or does it happen and then millisecond two happens? And we tend to think that they don't overlap. Uh, otherwise, it would just be one fat millisecond. <laughs> so it must be that one millisecond stops, then the second millisecond starts. Are, we all, are you okay with that? And you say, yeah, I don't want milliseconds overlapping because milliseconds have, they're the shortest part of time. If you pile two of them together, it's not the shortest part of time anymore. Okay, are they discrete? Does one start, stop, start, stop? Yeah, that's the way it feels to me. It feels to me if Tim is the flow of his body and mind, then he should be the discrete milliseconds, okay? Well, then the garden says, well, what connects those milliseconds? Why, why isn't there a millisecond of Tim followed by a millisecond of Joe followed by a millisecond of Rosa? Why, why does it all have to be Tim? If the milliseconds don't touch each other, then why isn't Tim every random millisecond? And it, it's uncomfortable to think about. You're like, I could, you know, don't give me all this BS, just tell me what it is, you know. But the guard's just like, if Tim was made up of separate milliseconds of his body and mind, then there's no particular reason why he would have to be the milliseconds of his body and mind, because the milliseconds of his body, for example, wouldn't be connected. One would finish and the next one would start, but they wouldn't have a relationship. They're, they're like separate tennis balls or something and they don't overlap. So any part of anybody could be Tim in the next millisecond. So you can't say that Tim is his body and mind, okay? Because it doesn't make sense. And he, he's not telling you what it really is. He's just telling you what doesn't make sense. And we keep, there's this Buddhist uh, tradition of, uh, trapping the opponent in a contradiction and then watching him run to the other mouse hole and then you block that one and then you block that one and you block that one and finally he's in the middle of the floor, in the middle of the room he's saying, you know, I don't know, you know. So here we go. Shenyang. Shenyang means, hey, I'll tell you another problem. Pum soso rori dan chik na mitete pumbala mambo yepata dakyang no tadepatima Is Tim his body and mind? Yes or no? It's not my body and mind, it's his body and mind. Okay, so there's two Tims. Why? His body and mind are separate. There's two things, you know? No, they're both Tim. No, you said, is Tim his body and mind? Yeah, he is body and mind. Is the body and mind plural? Yes. Is it multiple? Yes. Are there multiple Tims running around? No. It's just one Tim with body and mind, okay? So there'd have to be two me's. Technically, you got that next picture. 
uh, the mirror, the lady in the mirror. Okay, if Tim were his body and mind, then there's a, there's a, there's a contradiction of plurality. The body and mind are plural. Tim is singular. We don't say Tim's, uh, oh, look, here comes Tim's, uh, you know. Uh, but you should, if, if, it, if his connection to his body and mind is natural, then he should be his body and mind, and then he should be two. Okay. And it sounds silly to you, and you're like, ah, come on, you know, it doesn't mean anything. But it's because you haven't thought about it carefully that the idea of Tim being his body and mind is untenable. It doesn't make sense if you're really honest. If you're really, really honest, it doesn't make sense. He'd have to be plural. All right. Mm. Next verse, Timothy. Tim, Tim's next verse, okay. Uh, if Tim is not inherently connected to Tim's body and mind because of all those problems, then, okay, so then Tim is distinct from his body and mind. Let's, how about we go that way? Okay, the guardian says, let's, why don't you go a different mouse hole? Try a different mouse hole. And we're like, okay, so Tim is separate from his body and mind. So Tim has an existence which is discreet from his body and mind, okay? Body and mind die, Tim keep going. They're, they're, in the end, they're separate. He picks up a new body and mind later. How's that? Let's go that way. The guard says, okay, let's go that way. All right. Then he says, Okay. Mm. Uh, so let's see. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. And see if you can follow this one. And they're not easy. Uh, Tim's body and mind, uh, Tim's body and mind display certain characteristics. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, let's see the example he gives. Uh, so there's a idea called duche. Duche means anything in the universe which was caused by a cause and conditions. Okay, so like a tree, a tree has a main cause which is the seed, and then it has conditions like warmth, water, gardener, sunlight. Okay, and uh, let's say that Tim is separate from his body and mind. The body and mind are products of causes. The body came from the semen and egg of his parents. Uh, the mind, I don't know, depends on what you believe, but I don't know, a consciousness woke when there was enough chemicals in the, in the brain area or something. Uh, so they all have causes. As causes, as things which have causes, they should display the typical career path of a cause thing, which is start, stay, and fall apart. <laughs> okay. All cause things in the universe, uh, when the causes and conditions come together, they come into existence, they last for a while, and then they crumble. Okay? And we have to say that Tim's body and mind display those three things. Uh, they started at some point, they lasted for a while, and then inevitably they fell apart, okay? Mm. In that case, okay, what qualities does Tim have if he's separate from his body and mind? Does he start? Does he continue? Does he stop? Does he fall apart? Because if he doesn't have a relationship with his body and mind where he is the body and mind, if he's separate from the body and mind, then he loses the right to come into the world, to continue for a while, and then to leave the world because he doesn't have that relationship with the body and mind that has those qualities. He doesn't, he has a separate relationship. He exists independent of his body and mind. Well, in that case, Tim should just be forever. Okay? Because he doesn't have the relationship with his body and mind that he is them. He somehow has a separate existence from them, okay? So either way you want to take it, Tim, Tim is part of his body and mind has problems. And then Tim is not part of his body and mind has problems because the body and mind are what mark Tim as a thing, which starts, lasts, and falls apart. Because the only way we can tell 
he's going to start last and fall apart is from the indicators of his body and his mind. Because there's no reason for Tim to fall apart. Tim, Tim uh, just the name, right? It wasn't born 23 years ago or whatever it was. And it didn't last for a while and it didn't end. Okay, If, if Tim is separate from his body and mind, then Tim would just be eternal. Because what marks him as impermanent is the behavior of his body and mind. Got it? If, if you are not your body and mind, if you are somehow separate from your body and mind, if you're the king and they are your servants, okay, then you don't have that relationship. Okay. Mm, okay. And uh, then he talks about uh, Tim's relationship to, what is that? Oh, yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, there's another problem. And this gets into, um, he takes a typical, we can take the qualities of, we can take the qualities of living thingness of the body and mind. They have a birth, they go for a while, then they die. If Tim was somehow separate from his body and mind, nothing would mark Tim as starting, staying, and stopping, okay? There'd be no indicator to us that Tim was born or got old or stayed for a while because he wouldn't have those qualities. Why? He's separate from his body and mind. He has an independent existence from his body and mind. So, and there's another problem, okay? Now, uh, Chodin Lama gives us another problem. The main, uh, the definition of physical matter what is it? Do you know physical matter definition? Sukhitseni. What's the definition of physical matter in, in Buddhism? <laughs> okay. What's the definition of red in Buddhism? Uh, and it's a very interesting... Uh, yeah, anything, you know, what's green? If somebody doesn't know what's green, and you say, that, that's green. <laughs> that's green, you know. There's no other way to define green unless you do wavelength thing or something like that. You can say this way, this angstrom to this thing, you know. But in general conversation, if you had never seen green before and I wanted to define it for you, the only way is to point to it and say, this is green. This is what we say is green. Okay. So Tim's body is suksurua, something we can point to as physical stuff. Okay. That's, that's its main characteristic. What's his mind? main characteristic is sensation, okay? What's the main quality of Tim's mind is that he senses things, he feels things, okay? That's the difference between Tim and a rock, is that he feels things. So feeling is, feeling is, the, is the essence of Tim's mind, sensation. And then the essence of Tim's physical existence is something that exhibits physicality, okay? So those are the two parts of, of Tim. Okay. If Tim was uh, separate from those, then again, there's no defining Tim. We can't say Tim is conscious, and we can't say Tim has a presence in the world if he were not connected to his body and mind, right? We, we covered the problems with a Tim that was connected to his body and mind. For example, discrete milliseconds, right? Uh, but now we're discussing the problems of a Tim who is his body, oh, sorry, is, is divorced from his body and mind, who somehow has an existence independent of his body and mind. And then Tim wouldn't exhibit physicality and he wouldn't have uh, sensations, okay? That we'd have to look for a Tim like that. And that's not possible. We can't have a Tim like that. There wouldn't be Tim then. If there was no physicality and no sensations, Tim couldn't be running this show. Right? <laughs> we think so. All right. Mm. It's not just bullshit philosophy. I, I, uh, the religion department at Princeton got so small that they made us share a, a, a building with the philosophy department because they also were shrinking all the time. And uh, so they said, okay, now you guys stay in this one building and split down the middle. You, you, the religion department has this half, the the philosophy department has this half. And then uh, we had to share the same uh, office spaces and coffee coffee station. 
And so we ran into the philosophy majors every once in a while, especially the doctorates, you know. And it was really weird. It was really, really weird. And you'd say, here, have some sugar. And they'd say, sugar. You know, it doesn't exist. <laughs> they were always in this angst thing, you know, like, is sugar there or sugar isn't there, you know? And it was very frustrating. Finally, we just made a separate coffee station for them because we didn't want to talk to them, you know, because it was just frustrating. They, they were unsure of everything, you know? So I'm not trying to do that. So Nagarjan is not trying to do that. He's not trying to say doubt everything about yourself or, or have permanent angst because maybe Tim's there or maybe Tim's not there. He's just saying there's, if you slow down and really consider it, Tim cannot be who you thought he was. Uh, and that turns out to be a good thing because if Tim was who you thought he was, he could not be perfected into an angel. He could not be rebuilt. And if he is who you thought he was, then he's going to live, die, and, and disappear, and that's the end of the thing. Okay, so, all right. Dakni yopa mayina. Dakni yopa kalakur. This is the last sentence of this chapter. We just zoomed through the whole chapter. Okay, am I right, Tim? Did I get lost? <laughs> you got this look. There's no picture for it. <laughs> uh, and the Garjana offhandedly throws a bomb, and then he leaves the, the kitchen, you know. And he says, uh, by the way, if there's no Tim, there's no Tim's. Tim apostrophe is. If there's no Tim, there's nothing that Tim has. And then he leaves the stage. He, he, he says, that's the end of the chapter. And, uh, and in Buddhism, this is a, a huge question. You know, if, what's the relationship between me and mine, and the misunderstanding of who is who I am, coupled with the misunderstanding of who is what I own or what is mine, me and mine. Okay, the question of me and mine is the root of all suffering. According to Buddhism, the misunderstanding of me, coupled with the misunderstanding of mine, is the root of all pain. And all trouble in the world comes from that, okay? And then Nagarjuna just kind of says, look, if there's problems with Tim, there's, problem with, there's problems with Tim's apostrophe S. Yes. And he says, see you guys later. Let's go to chapter 19, <laughs> okay? And as we pointed out yesterday, uh, there's no obvious flow between the chapters. Me and Veronica were discussing it this morning. Uh, she says, I have a theory, you know, I've been bugging her all week, you know. She says, she says, I have a theory, what? He gave separate lectures in separate places for five years. People wrote the lectures at different places and they glued it together into one book. And I'm like, I mean, that's very possible. It is possible, but it's not the way it was supposed to happen. Supposedly, there's some very deep and important connection from one chapter, there's a segue. And if you get the segues, you understand emptiness and you can become an angel. But if you don't get the segues, you gotta work harder. Yo! So, oh, is that my... It is by it, the Gypsy Kings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's a good segue. So look, so the, the idea is uh, we've set all the students in this class your homework is to figure out the segues, right? And, and I haven't found someone who did it. I mean, it probably is there, but I, I, I was kind of saving it for you guys. So we're gonna segue, we're gonna go on, we're gonna stop this class. We'll go to class, uh, we'll go to chapter 19. But I challenge you as, as a student, as a listener, I challenge you to, to explain the segue from 18 to 19. How does he, by the way, 19 is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that is not the segue yet. I take it back. Let's do that later. After he does mine, he has a little bit more, okay? We're not segueing yet, I apologize. Okay. All right, let's finish that chapter next class, and then we'll segue to 19, okay? See you guys then. And by the way, if it sounds confusing and it's difficult, um, it's harder to die. 
and disappear and, and end up somewhere else, okay, which you will. So if it sounds like a challenge to work your way through this stuff, I would, I would argue that it's more of a challenge to, to die, to go into some kind of oblivion, to come out of it again. And by the way, something your mom told you, if something can happen once, it can happen twice. If, if you've come here once with no explanation, then there's no logical reason why it wouldn't happen again. Whether you believe in future life, I don't care. But wouldn't it be nice to figure it all out and, and reach a state of, of some kind of bliss or understanding that you could stay in forever and not have to keep, keep popping into places and have this short, violent life and then do another one, you know? So um, it's not just philosophy. It has a deep, deep... A goal and a deep, deep purpose. And sooner or later, you're going to have to face those questions uh, some at some point in your life. Okay. All right, Tim, let's go. Hey.